thou exalted Lord, be thou glorified. Glory to your name forever. We give you praise this morning. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worshipped. Amen. Please can you welcome someone by your left and right as you take your seat in God's presence. who are coming in for the first time we want to welcome you to October edition of DEI Breakfast Prayer Initiative uh, you can celebrate Jesus for that you are welcome we trust God that your lives will never remain the same this morning in Jesus name uh, please if you are pressed and you need to use the restroom you can just go behind or just will show you the way to the restroom so that you can comfortably use it of the Lord be praised. And this morning also, we just want to charge us to be prepared and ready for what God is set to do in our lives and in our midst. And we pray that the good Lord will bless us all in Jesus' name. Please, in case you've not registered your name at the registration stand, you can just go behind and do that and fill the information there. It's important that you fill the right information and we'll reach out to you in due time as the Lord helps us all in Jesus' name. Quickly, Psalms 34 and verse 1. Psalms 34, verse 1. The Bible speaking, it says, I will bless the Lord at all times. Say, so His praise shall continually be in my mouth. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. You know, blessing the Lord at all times is an unconditional act. It has nothing to do with how you feel, whether in good times or in bad times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Is a constant um, devotion to God. Continually. It's a devotion. It's deliberate. And you know, we praise God by beholding His goodness in our lives day by day. That's the secret of our praise. The more we see his goodness, his praise swells in our heart. And this morning, I would like us to rise to our feet and really bless the Lord and praise his name as we usher in his presence. The Lord has been good to us from the beginning of this year to this time. If you look at the goodness of God, you will see how faithful God has been in your life in your career, in your business, your family, in all your endeavors. Some of us have traveled through all nations. Some of us have traveled outside the country. You know, God has preserved, God has kept us. I'd like us to use this opportunity, this time that God has given to us to raise an incense of thanksgiving, a worthy praise to him. I'd like you to sincerely thank the Lord. You know what God has done for you. Some of you, you have not taken any medication so far. You are living in divine health, experientially. I tell you the truth. You can just look around and wonder what is happening. You have not broken down by any infirmity or any sickness. The Lord has kept your bones. He has kept you. Can you lift up your voice this morning and let's render thanksgiving to him. Render praise to him. The psalmist say his praise will continually be in my mouth. Lift up your voice and let's pray to the Lord this morning in thanksgiving and humble adoration. We lift up an incense of worship to you, Lord, the great Mosai. Please go ahead and bless the Lord. Oh, what a good time to give him praise. What a glorious moment to bless the Lord this morning. I like you wherever you are to just give God all the praise. Give him all the glory. There is no God like our God. It is him who has blessed us. It is him who has helped us. The journey so far. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead and bless his name. Give him all the praise. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. You are worthy of our praise. You are worthy to receive all the glory. You are worthy to receive all the honor. Jesus, your name be lifted high. We 
we exalt your name. We exalt you. We exalt you. You are worthy of my praise this morning. The Lord be praised. The Lord be glorified. The Lord be magnified. He has helped us. The Lord has secured our lives. He has secured our destiny. Lord, we give you praise. We give you praise. Go, go, go. 
Thank you, Father. In Jesus, mighty name we pray. Jeremiah chapter 15 and verse 15. Jeremiah chapter 15, verse 15. The Bible speaking, it said, O oh Lord, you know, remember me and visit it. The part I love about this scripture is that it says, Oh Lord, you know, you know my afflictions, you know the pressure I'm going through, you know, you know. You know that at this point in my life, I need your help. You know. You know. But you see, the fact that God knows, he still wants you to tell him. That is why Jeremiah went on to say, visit me. Remember me. There, I know there are many cases in front of you, but Lord, remember me. Eight billion people on earth, but God can hear one man's prayer. Anna went to Shiloh that day, and she cried that day. She prayed her heart out and God remembered her. Every service is an opportunity to beckon on God for intervention. So we maximize every opportunity we have. We don't take the time of prayer for joke because that's the time, that's the time for divine intervention. Because prayer is earthly permission for heavenly intervention. So when it's time to pray, it's actually time for a visitation. So men that understand this principle, they don't joke when it is time to pray. We keep everything aside and we face the business of prayer because that's the time to interact with divinity. The only time divinity meets with humanity is when the altar of prayer is raised. And this is breakfast prayer initiation. We are going to pray this morning. Oh God, you know, remember me in this service and visit me. I will come back with a testimony next month. Can you lift up your voice and pray like Hannah and cry to God? Oh God, by your mercy, remember me and visit me. Lift up your voice and raise a prayer to God. This is an hour of visitation. This is a time of remembrance. Oh God, remember me. Oh Lord, you know. Oh Lord, you know my case. Oh Lord, you know my case. You know my situation. You know my afflictions. You know what I'm going through. You know what I'm passing through. At this point in my life, I need divine intervention. Is somebody praying? Don't worry about losing your voice. It's part of the prayer. Don't worry, pray, pray, pray. It's time to engage him. It's time to engage him. Lord, remember me.
And so you are praying. Visit me this morning. Visit me this morning. The expectation of the righteous shall not be cut short. Visit me. Hear my heart cry. Hear my heart cry. Hear my heart cry. Hear my heart cry, Lord. Hear my heart cry. Lord, we give you praise. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Why not lift your hands in thanksgiving and say, Father, I thank you for answering me this morning. Thank you. Just give him praise because you know he's going to do marvelous things this morning. He's going to do glorious things this morning. He's going to do mighty things this morning. Just give him praise. Give him thanks. Bless the Lord. He's worthy of our praise. It's worthy to receive glory, honor, power, and majesty. Father, we bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you for that which he's going to do in this meeting. Come on, bless him, bless him, bless him, bless him, bless him, bless him. Thank you, Jesus.
Open your mouth and just acknowledge in all that you do, in all that you are, and in all that you have become. Open your mouth and acknowledge it.
without wrath or doubting. That means as far as God is concerned, prayer is so important to a believer that anywhere is a suitable location. Anywhere means anywhere. People who commit immorality, before you start, start praying. I'm sure there will be no morale to God. <laughs> Are you hearing what I'm saying? He says, men pray everywhere. Whether in church, whether at home, whether in your shop. You know, I make it a duty every time I go to the office. The first thing I do before I attend to anybody, sometimes there can be people waiting for me. Once I enter, everybody leaves. The first five minutes, I must spend it alone. Pray and create an atmosphere that will help me. I don't know about you, but the way I was designed as a man is to live constantly in dependence on God. I need his wisdom. I need the favor of God. It's the favor of God that will make you not come in contact with trouble when you go to your shop. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Just like you plan to have a good day, the devil also plans for your own day. And the devil's good day for him is that you have a bad day. So you need something that creates an atmosphere, creates a climate that allows only that which God wants to see. That men pray everywhere. In your shop you pray. In your office you pray. Some of us, the, the last time you got an employment to that office was when you stopped praying. Ah, Pastor, you're welcome. Good to see you. Please help me honor my friend, Pastor Musa. You're welcome. Amen. Let me tell you something. The fire that is required to do ministry is the same fire required for business. Whether you like it or not. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The same fire you use for ministry. People think only ministers should be revived. As a business person, you need revival. Though. There is an effect. There is an advantage that the fire of God on your life has on your finances. Has on your transactions. Has on your career. There is a kind of advancement that only comes by an effective prayer life. Are you hearing what I'm saying? After every time Jesus prayed, he moved. After every moment of prayer, something notable happened. Luke chapter, Mark chapter 1, the Bible says in verse 35, Before dawn, he went to a solitary place to pray. And they came and looked for him. They said, all men is seeking him, is seeking you. Jesus said, let us go to the other towns and preach. It's time to move. Advancement always come by effective prayer. Luke chapter 6 verse 12. Jesus prayed all night and when he came down, he appointed 12 disciples who later became the 12 apostles. And the Bible says that people sought to touch him because power went out of him. There is no advancement in this life outside of prayer. Many people's career, many people's business is exactly depicting the kind of prayer life they have. Let me tell you the honest truth. Are you hearing me? So one of the reasons why we come here is to pray and draw strength and be revived first. Then we can now, we can now take hold of this altar, this platform that God has raised to change certain things in the systems. Are you ready to pray? Your first prayer point we are going to pray is that God will grant us the grace for a consistent prayer life. Please don't take this prayer for granted. Me, as a man of God, till today I'm praying for consistency in my own prayer life. Last night I was so engaged yesterday, went back home late and I knew that if I sleep, there will be nothing to be done in the night. So I had to stay awake till 12. When I stood up to pray, I started having abdominal distension. I couldn't stand straight. I was walking like this because of pains. But I had to stay and pray at least one hour, 30 minutes. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because a lot depends on your prayer. It's when we pray that we can see the effectiveness of the power of God. God is not without restraint to win with many or to conquer with few. That's what the scripture says. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Your destiny, your career, the system where God has planted you is depending on the altar of prayer that you raise. And knowing that it is not human to be consistent, we need grace. The Bible says even the youth shall be weary and the young men shall utterly fail. How much more an elderly person? He said, but they that wait on the Lord. So what we are part of what we are doing now is we are waiting on God for strength. Are you hearing what I'm saying? One of the reasons why many Christian businessmen give up 
and pack up their business is because of no strength no determination to continue credit upon credit and then you just advise yourself that I'm not called to do this no when there is a required amount of fire in your spirit even in the midst of discouragement you will continue Minis business is like ministry before you begin to succeed you will get to a point where you will fail 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 and even give up but if you can pass if you can go through that dark valley where everything is against you but you still continue you still stay on it because you know this is what God has called you to do or perhaps you see the bigger picture that is more than just a pay that you should receive God planted you in that system for a reason perhaps you're being in that system a time will come where you become a door for others to come in for other believers to come in maybe after two years of being in that system you'll be promoted to the position where you now become the door is it not Daniel who was promoted that recommended Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego to be promoted are you ready to pray we are going to ask God for grace for a consistent prayer life are you ready to pray if you can pray in the spirit this is the time to summon listen this is an interdenominational meeting are you hearing me there is no protocol the first rule is no rule as long as you are engaging heaven engage heaven in the name of Jesus, I receive the grace to be consistent in the place of prayer. The grace for an effective and a consistent prayer life. The grace to be consistently on fire for God. Come on, pray. Career people pray. Business people pray. Shake it, balata kapalata. Ke pato sabala tela barias. Sevele kete balata ne baba ni ama. He says, I will. I desire that men pray everywhere. That men pray everywhere. And he taught them a parable to these wives that men ought always to pray. And not to fail. Men ought always to pray. Men ought always to pray. Men ought always to pray. Always to pray. Always to pray. And not to fail. Always to pray. Always to pray. Always to pray. Always to pray. Ashaka palagate negeteva. Ika palaka palagadasya. Consistency in my prayer life. As an artisan, as a businessman, as an entrepreneur, as a career man, as a CEO, the grace to stay consistent. That your success will not liquidate your prayer life. That your promotion will not liquidate your fire. <laughs> Jesus said, pray that you fall not into temptation. Pray that you do not fall into temptation. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
chapter 6 I believe is verse 13 that says that the fire on the altar must always be burning and shall never go out that was the Old Testament that was the altar of incense in the temple the temple had two sections alright apart from the altar court there were two sections in the building there was the holy place and the most holy place now, in the holy place, there were certain things that were kept there. I don't want to go around there because it's not needed now. But there was an altar that was made of gold. It was called the altar of incense. God said that fire must always be on that altar. Now, in the New Testament, that altar is you and I. And that incense of fire that must go up is the sacrifice of prayer and worship on a daily basis you don't need to have a reason to pray you need to pray because it's your responsibility it's a required amount of sacrifice that must go up to God every day I think God has made it easy for us that the sacrifice is no longer bulls and cows and all of that if it was some of us can pay some of us will not be able to pay now it is prayer every day of your life that you must be constantly on fire. He said the fire shall not go out. That's why in the New Testament, God promised us through Jesus that when the Holy Ghost comes, we will be baptized with fire. That fire speaks of consistency. Are you, are you hearing what I'm saying? You see, the only way you can be consistent at what you do is when you are backed up by a supernatural form of energy. You see our brothers from the other side, Make, just find yourself in a flight with them or in a taxi or something with them or in a meeting. You see them holding something and they are counting it. And my, my pain is that they pray to a dead God. But we pray to a living God. But we don't pray. They pray five times a day. Whether they are sick or not. Whether they are broke or not. Even during their fasting, they say if you can't fast, you must do something to cover up. But we are not under the law. We are under grace. That empower is not a li is not a license not to. It's rather an empowerment to pray. Are you hearing what I'm saying? As a businessman, you need to be on fire. It's that fire that supplies fresh ideas that will move the business. Are you hearing what I'm, tell I'm telling you? There are other businessmen, secular businessmen. They go for seminars. They read 48 laws of power. All of these things. They go to the shrine. Do everything they can. Your advantage is in the Holy Ghost. Are you hearing what I'm saying? For you to remain in tune, you must be on fire. You must be sensitive. One of our brothers gave me a testimony yesterday. Very busy. He does two jobs. But one of those days, he had a vision. And he saw his child slump and started gasping for life. So he came out of the vision, began to pray, looked for the child, anointed the child, pray and cancel. Three days later, the same cloth, the same place, the child fell down and started gasping. They rushed the child to one clinic, they referred them to TH. The same bed he saw in the vision was where they kept the child on. And then he said, the only thing Satan will be missing here is that the child will not die. The Bible says, pray that you do not fall into temptation. He said, pray to withstand the evil day. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If you are not praying for yourself, you pray for another person. Do you know, sir? That's why we are going to pray against death much later. But the prayer that we are praying right now is, Lord, help me to be always on fire. Some of you, the last promotion you got eroded your prayer life. The last breakthrough you had in business, you got a 10 million naira contract. It liquidated your secret place. You have money now, but no fire. You are down spiritually. You are moving. Any arrow can hit you. In fact, arrows are still hitting you by this time of your Christian life. No. 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 Are you ready to pray? If for nothing, prayer is a sacrifice to God and a shield to your soul. Are you hearing what I'm saying? 
Lord, help me to be always on fire for you all day, all night. Open your mouth and pray that prayer. In the name of the Lord. Help me to be on fire, on fire, on fire. Baptize me with the fire of the Holy Ghost. Fresh fire, 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 fresh stagnation some of you need to move from where you are spiritually financially in your career we need to some of us need to move you've been on one place for a long time God told them in Deuteronomy he said you have dwelt on this mountain for too long how do you advance it's by prayer it's by prayer it's by prayer Jesus said let us go to the other side all of a sudden a storm rose up the next time Jesus didn't go with them, he went to the mountain to pray. They left and they were troubled by the storm. Jesus, who went to pray, received supernatural energy. The Bible says, at the fourth watch of the night, they saw Jesus walking towards them. He had transported by prayer to the destination and came back to help them. There's no advancement without prayer, believe me. Be listen, God did not die, Jesus did not die for us to bring us into a covenant that disintegrates our life as far as God is concerned there is no dichotomy in, in our life your life is holistic are you hearing me everything that happens to your spiritual life affects directly or indirectly your finances the day you learn that the better for you he said I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in good health as so it's time for some of us to advance. Isaiah 45 verse 1 and 2. Thus said the Lord unto Cyrus his anointed, whose right hand I have held, to subdue nations before him, and lose the armor of kings, to open before him the double doors, so that the gates will not be shut. Verse 2. I will go before you and make the crooked places straight. If the crooked places are not straight, you can't move. So he has to go ahead of you. It's called breakthrough. He said, I will break in pieces the gates of bronze. Gates there can symbolize people, human beings, that have decided you will not be promoted. Somebody told one of our brothers, and I'm saying, I'll say it again, you know, somebody told one of our brothers in his former office that he will not be promoted. He will not promote him. They told me the story after our brother now got a job off in another organization and left. You know what I said when they told me? I said, that guy, because he did not promote my son, he will leave this town in shame. I've said it, and it will happen. And the person that is hearing me now, is hearing me, you should better go and start praying for the mercy on that man, because it will happen, no? Uh, because you refuse, he's doing all the work, reward him and promote him, no. They say you will not promote him. You will leave this town in shame. He 
said, I will go, I will break in pieces the gates of bronze and cut in sunder the bars of iron. Father, every limitation, every opposition around my career, around my business, around my life, by the power of the anointing, let it be broken through. Open your mouth and run. In Jesus' name. Hold on. Hold on. Some of you are in organ. You see, some of you, when you pray this prayer, what will happen is another offer will come for you to leave that organization. Because probably, as far as God is concerned, there is no, there is nothing else for you there. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Some of you, as you pray this prayer, this that siege on your business, it will break loose. Are you ready to pray now? Lift your voice and say, "Every opposition against me, by the power of the anointing, be broken, be broken, be broken, and I advance by the force of the Spirit. By the force of grace, by the force of the anointing." In your career, every force of stagnation, every gate of stagnation, in your business, every siege of the enemy, every siege of the enemy, every siege, every siege, every siege, every siege, every siege, be broken. Every siege, 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 we are going to pray again oh. every siege of the enemy around your life let me explain what the siege is huh? please sir the fair man you sir have we met before we've met before have I spoken to you before please come sir come there's something connecting the two of you that we need to deal with quickly don't worry, Any t wherever my time stops, I must stop. Are you hearing me? We are going to pray against the siege of the enemy. A siege is a military term. In those days, when one kingdom wants to conquer the other kingdom, the soldiers of this kingdom will go and surround the gates of this other kingdom. You know what it means? It means economic activities will be grounded. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I, I call them out because... God said this thing about siege. We need to break it. Eh? Yeah. Just we are not in good time. Eh? We are not in good time. Oh, you people are not in good time. Yes, daddy. You will settle. That's part of what is causing things not to move. Are you hearing me? No, believe me. I'm, I'm a prophet of God. Okay? It's part of what? Are you ready to pray? Every siege. There was a siege. Listen, there was a siege against the city where Elisha was. The king of Syria. So who is betraying us? They say nobody they betray you. There's one prophet that eaves drop on everything. You say, okay, go and kill that prophet. And the Bible says they surrounded the ah, but thank God for Elisha. Elisha told the servant, said, Do not be afraid, for they that are with us are more than they. Can I explain what is wrong here? There's a problem, actually. Alright? But let me show you where the problem is. It's not what you people think. What you people think is the... That's the symptom of the problem. I saw a spirit whispering to you. And whispering to you. Are you hearing me? And then I saw people. This is like character assassination. 
people tell you wrong things about him against you are you hearing what i'm saying sir is it true and the same thing is happening with you i don't know if you people used to do business before have you had business transactions before is my brother and uh, is my neighbor and in politics we work together but along the line you exactly could, what you are saying you used to work together uh, okay. but we don't work together now don't worry we'll resolve this later Wait, 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 wait. I hope we are not trying to settle case here. Yeah. No, let him hold it for you. Let him hold it for you. Okay. Uh, what I'm saying is that he's a very good friend of mine. Form. Okay. Eat together, do everything together. Okay. But you know, when two of you are working together, your interest must be one. It's all right. I understand. We'll, don't worry. We'll settle that one. It's okay. If I didn't call you out, you will not say it. Don't worry. We'll settle. Listen. We'll settle it later. We'll talk. What I want to pray now is the siege of the enemy around both of you should be broken. And I want to pray, I don't know if this is happening now, but the wife of one of you is currently having a health challenge in her body. I don't know if this is happening now or will happen. I saw the wife of one of you having a health challenge. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So we are going to pray against this. After now, we will meet and settle. Okay? Because there's a breakthrough ahead. You don't believe me? You don't believe me? <laughs> you don't believe me? Hear me? Listen. There are people that when they speak, whether you like it or not, whether they are popular or not, they speak for God. I think I'm one of them. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I called a woman. A woman called me. I think she's been having challenges trying to conceive from Abuja. And then we prayed. And then I prayed for her husband. Her husband is a medical doctor, no job. Imagine. That doctor that when you come out on the street and say, I'm a doctor, job will find you there. No job. And we began, it was witchcraft. And it was somebody who was related to her that was doing her. And the reason why I avoided that was because I wanted that witch to die. So I didn't say anything about it. And I told the woman that I see God opening an international door for your husband. She shouted that as her husband's sister in the U.S. called and said he should prepare his passport. And then I told her that even before that one happened, God would open doors for him in Abuja. One, she didn't believe me. One week later, and sometimes I don't blame people when they don't believe. People be, are in too, too much affliction. But discern when the voice of God comes to you. I must not wear a suit. Are you hearing me? Elijah, what did he wear? Camel hair. One week later, a big hospital that opened in Abuja, somebody called and said, send your husband CV. Was it by mistake that that one happened? Are you ready to pray? There's a breakthrough. So we need to break this siege. Then later on, we'll settle together. Very true. It's all right. Are you ready to pray? Every siege of the enemy around my career, around my business, around my finance, be broken in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. Be broken. Be broken, 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 break the siege, 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 break the siege. In Jesus' name we pray. Please, can I have five minutes? Just five more minutes. Huh? Every siege over your life is broken. See, I see the angel of God pulling out papers. Are you hearing me? Contract papers, CVs. Are you? Listen. 
between now and the next BPI, I saw two people here change jobs. Mysteriously. Mysteriously. Every siege over your life is broken. In the name of Jesus Christ. It is broken. I said it is broken. In the name of Jesus Christ. And let the doors be open today. In the name of Jesus. You can go back to your seat. I'll see the two of you after now. I want us to pray against death. Death. I have less than five minutes and then we'll, we'll be done. Death. Death. Are you ready to pray? Don't be afraid. You see, if I tell you pray against something for us, so when we pray, believe it. But if I tell you pray against something for America, all those behem, you may not. But for you, I don't know why people, you have a bad dream, you wake up, you pray about it, and you are more afraid after prayers. Did God not say whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven? Do you know for how many years people have been dreaming that I died? Since 2019. Since 2019. Even from prophetesses. See me. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Isaiah told Ezekiel, say, set your house in order because you will die and not live. Ezekiel said, thank you. You have delivered your message. He turned to God. He said, remember. Are you hearing what I'm saying? We are going to pray against death. Every sudden attack of death for you, for your family members. On Monday night breaking Tuesday, I had a, a dream or I don't, a vision or something. And it was so serious, I had to fast that day. You notice when I came to your house, I didn't eat, sir. Uh, I saw the spirit of death hit some people. I saw your son. That was what jacked me up from that dream. And I started the fast right there. I saw your son and I, I jumped out. I said, no. As soon as I jumped out, tongues. I prayed 6 a.m., prayed 9 a.m., prayed 12 noon before I left. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Every plan of the enemy to bring sudden shame. To bring mourning around you. In the name of Jesus. I want you to open your mouth and rebuke the sentence of death. Psalm 79 verse 11 says, Preserve those appointed to death. Psalm 68 verse 20 says, Unto God belongs in Jesus hallelujah because you have come here today the sentence of death over your life is cancelled Number two, I pray in the name of Jesus, the sentence of death around your family is cancelled. Yeah. Number three, I declare, because you have come here, your career, your business, your destiny, your spiritual life is implicated for breakthroughs. Listen, somebody just sent me a text now. Say, I, got, I, I wanted to see you to share a testimony I got promoted in my office to an international post in, and he mentioned the country. This confirms your exact words when we came to your house. And it was this year. I'm not saying it to flaunt. No, it's not today that I've been speaking for God. But I just want you to believe. Are you hearing what I'm saying? We're going to pray for Nigeria before I sit down. Is it good for us to pray for Nigeria? <laughs> Something crazy is happening in this country. I don't understand. Something crazy. We have to pray. My time is up. We have to pray for this nation. As at yesterday, I saw on the news that the Naira is the worst currency. Browse it. At 
1,770 something naira per dollar. World Bank, oh, their statistics say the naira is the worst currency. So our money is becoming like tissue paper. They say when we get refinery fuel, we reduce. We have the refinery fuel even increase. It's like the refinery came as a gym equipment to give the fuel chest. And all kinds of useless bills and policies are being passed by confused people. That's why the Bible says we should pray for kings in authority. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Every decree, every policy that is implemented to suffer Nigerians, we are going to change it today. There was a man called Haman. He used the king's signet to enact a decree that all the Jews should be killed. Esther pleaded before the king and Haman was executed but the decree was still in force and then Esther went to the king and pleaded again he said grant that the decree of Haman will be countered Esther chapter 8 and the Bible says she wrote in fact in Esther chapter 9 the last verse the Bible says according to the decree of Esther that's what I want to teach on on the women's conference the decree of Esther how to change policies how to cancel things and implement things. That's the reason for this altar. Don't say we are small and insignificant. God, all those things don't mean anything before God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Is it not here we are that God is showing us things about US, about this place? It's happening live. Don't you ever say you are small before God? Jeremiah said, I'm small. He said, don't say you are small. I've touched your tongue. Are you ready to pray? Father, every policy statement every decree every law every bill that is being passed to make nigerians suffer we stand by the authority of heaven to change it to change it to change it to change it open your mouth and pray we change it 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 in the oil industry every policy enslaved we reverse the order. We reverse the decree. We reverse those bills. <laughs> Pray for your country. Pray for Nigeria. Nigeria is your Jerusalem. Pray. 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 We reverse it. We reverse it. We call on the God of Sabaoth. The Lord of hosts. The King of glory. Yahweh Sabaoth. Yahweh. The Lord of the King of glory, Yahweh In Jesus, mighty name we pray. You are going to pray against corruption in this country. Job chapter 5 verse 12, he disappoints the devices of the crafty that their hands cannot perform. Whether you like it or not, there are some people behind why Nigeria is the way she is. Something is not making up. They tell us if they do this, this will happen. They do it, we see the opposite. Somebody is sabotaging it. We don't even know who owns the Dangote refinery again. And I hope you know he has increased. He's now the 65th richest man in the world. What 20 something billion dollars. But how much is fuel? Are you ready to pray? If we don't pray and we keep quiet, I don't know if next year people will be able to survive. If we don't pray now, no change will come except the saints pray. Somebody asked me a few months ago, he says, Apostle, a senior military officer, he says, Apostle, what do you say about U.S. election? Will Donald Trump win? I say, if the church prays, he will win. You can go everywhere and snap picture and be popular. There's something called witchcraft. They can bend it at the last moment. Are you ready to pray? Father, everyone sponsoring corruption in the system. 
Arrest them yourself and expose them. Arrest them and expose them. Pray for the next 10 seconds. Arrest and expose. 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 In Jesus' name we pray. Wave your hands and give Jesus praise. Bless his name. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. I want you to clap your hands for the King of Kings as you take your seat. Please take your seat in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to Jesus. Celebrate God with a clap offering one more time. Hallelujah. Amen. Can you celebrate the person beside you? Say, welcome to BPI. It's so good to see you. Welcome to BPI. It's so good to see you. I love the smiles on our faces. Hallelujah. The verse Daddy read before he started, Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 15. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. Hallelujah. I want to remind you that testimonies are not to be hoarded. Our testimonies are not to be hidden or hoarded like the goods in the market. Hallelujah. If the Lord has done something great for you, just as we heard the testimony that daddy shared of someone who received a job, a new job, I will want you to just come out at this moment and share with God's people testimony of what God has done on this platform, BPI platform. If we have anybody amongst us who wants to share the testimony, just wave your hands. Let me see you. Amen. Amen. All right. Can I say that if the Lord has done something for you, something great, just wave your hands. You are not coming out. Just wave your hands. If you agree that God has done something wonderful in your life, wave your hands. <laughs> wave your hands. To him now, as a sign of thanksgiving, wave your hands. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Glory to Jesus. All right. In the absence of any testimony, can we just begin to appreciate the Lord for that testimony that you waved your hands for? Can you say thank you, Jesus, for that testimony? Just say, Father, I am grateful. You kept me alive. You sustained me. You gave me health. You provided for me. I am grateful. I am grateful for seeing me through. I am grateful. I don't know what is that thing that you said the Lord has done. He has shown you goodness. Can you from the depth of your heart say thank you, Jesus. Father, we give you thanks. We give you thanks. This is the moment where you, the Lord is set to hear you say thank you. Appreciate him. Also, can you begin to say thank you because you will return next BPI with a testimony. Can you say, Father, I thank you because I know without any doubt in my heart that I will return ten times better. I will return with a testimony. I thank you. Appreciate him. Appreciate him. Call those testimonies by name. I will return with a new job. I will return with my child. I will return with this. I will return with that. I am grateful. I will return with better grades. I will return with that certificate that I have been looking up to you for. I will return with it and I am grateful. I thank you because I will return with so many testimonies and stand here to testify of your goodness. I will return with that contract. I am grateful. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. Hallelujah. We bless your name. In the name of Jesus. Wave your hands and say thank you, Jesus, one more time. Hallelujah. Celebrate God with a clap. He is worthy. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. If that hand is for Jesus. Put those hands wonderful. For Jesus. For Jesus. For Jesus. Praise the Lord. Once again, welcome to October BPI. Uh, as you have heard from our Father in the Lord, the prayers which was led by our Father in the Lord, very powerful. I believe as you're stepping out of this hall, your testimony will be waiting for you outside in the name.
name of Jesus. Um, BPI, it's a breakfast prayer initiative designed for business professionals of different uh, spheres of life. Sitting next to you is CEO, captain of industry. Um, turn to your right, turn to your left. With that understanding, please welcome that person. You might not know where you will meet. Greet that person with honor, with respect, with love from Christ. You are welcome in Jesus' name. Our next BPI is coming up on the 16th of November. If you are happy that you will come back with your testimony, put your hands together for Jesus. Put your hands together for Jesus for that testimony you are expecting. Please, you are encouraged to invite someone as you come. Um, I believe we are blessed by the prayers. We are blessed by everything that is happening here. Why not come with someone? In your rising, don't rise alone in your cycle. Rise with someone so that you will not be the local champion. But everybody around you will also be a champion. As you do that, the Lord will bless you in the name of Jesus. BPI has a WhatsApp platform. Um, that platform is for everyone to connect, to interact, where we share job vacancies and other opportunities. Please, if you're not on that platform, uh, indicate on that uh, registration form so that you'll be added. Um, please make that platform lively. Share, some, share a job that someone is needing. As you do that, the Lord will bless you. Um, SGNI, um, weekly service come up tomorrow. 3 p.m. at Meduguri International School. Please also invite someone. Let us continue in this blessing. In the name of Jesus. Um, okay, so, um, in the absence of nothing, in the absence of testimony, but I believe the Lord has done something for you. Please, um, immediately after the final prayer, is a short breakfast, light breakfast that will give you strength to hear that testimony you are waiting for outside. So please be patient. Get that light breakfast so that you'll be able to get strength and jubilate that testimony. Thank you. God bless. So please, with a standing ovation, let's invite our Father in the Lord for the closing prayer. Thank you all. Remain blessed. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. Thank you. God bless you. Are we blessed and happy to be here? All right. So I'm grateful to God that we are all here. And I want us to know and embrace the importance for prayers as career people, as business people, as... Uh, People that God has planted strategically in the marketplace. All right? Don't trivialize or casualize the place of spirituality. It is important. Okay? I remember, I think I told us a story a while ago about uh, a business man I met from Lagos. So we had breakfast in Abuja. And he was sharing with us, he's uh, into real estate, part of what he does. I think they are amongst one of the largest real estate companies in Africa. So, um, and he shared with me how that they gave, they had a project, a contract was given to them by the royal family of, uh, they call that place in Lagos, the Elegushi, something like that. So I checked the website of the, of the group and I saw that the project was around $350 million. Yes, I think, is it, what's the name of that? It's called, is it Channel? Channel, what? I've forgotten it, but it's on their website there. And as soon as they got that contract, all kinds of issues began to come up. From his staff getting sick to their equipment, getting grounded. They started, the first three months was okay, but as they moved to the site, part of what they were to do was to reclaim land. Okay? That means they would take sand from the ocean and use it and cover. And it was around uh, 200, is it 200 acres or so? Something like that. And uh, they didn't know that they were marine spirits. 
and they were witches and wizards. In fact, one of the people who lobbied for the contract but couldn't get the contract, he was later told that the elder brother to that contractor is the second among the wizards in Nigeria. So they didn't, I'm telling you a true story. Next year, I will try to convince him to come for our anniversary. So you will see him. And all kinds of things, sometimes he will go home and he will, he will be hearing sound in his ear as if they are hitting him. But this is a tongue-talking Christian. All through the night, he can't sleep. In the morning around four, the hammer will stop. He took pastors to the site. And what's frustrating, one day, one pastor he took to the site said, Oh God, just do what these people are saying. Go and sacrifice to the gods. True story. God is my witness, I tell you the truth. At that point, I, be, I was satisfied with the breakfast. I couldn't eat. I became ashamed. Now, they hold a very strong prayer meeting in Lagos. In fact, they're holding it now. Their meetings clash with us. Third Saturday, and they call them, what they call them? Um, ah, okay. Craftsmen. They are doing a conference with Apostle Arome and some other people at that this month or next month. Marketplace. 21 day fasting. Every first 21 days of the month. Then today, like, like this, the third Saturday, they will meet. When you come out from that kind of thing, you are grateful that you are alive. Do you know what $350 million could do for the kingdom? Do you know that if that thing was constructed, the employment opportunities, and being that the contractor was a Christian, you say, strike the shepherd, your case will not be the same. That's the reason why we need to pray. I see that I, I, I see their post every 21 every month, fasting and prayer with scriptures on Zoom. In fact, I'm planning in December to surprise them. I'll just travel and go for one of their meetings. Are you are you are you here? So that's why we need to pray. Aside from the evil aspects that we need to forestall. It is also good that we make notable advancement through the place of prayer in our career, in our businesses. And much more important is the spiritual climate that we create as united believers in the place of prayer so that the purposes of God can be established in our various spheres. Some of you are working in organizations that are ruled and powered by occultic people. The last time that boss said he's going on leave, do you know whether he went to a shrine? You're going to renew powers. Some of us are stand, sitting on... Some of us, they've charmed your seat many times. You don't know it's God that is saving you. In the night, you will see my face in the dream. You don't know that something was can cancelled. Then you go and sit on that seat. And the people are coming to check the seat. Why this seat never cripple? Believe it. The Bible speaks of arrows that fly by day. It's good to thank God for his mercy upon our life. But the mercy of God does not mean we'll be lazy. Especially those of us here in the north. Are we together? So this is an altar that God has raised. Once in a month is not too much sacrifice. Let's not be too big for God that we can't make time to be around. Let me tell you, once you devote yourself to spiritual activities, the devil will create excuses for you. He will multiply excuses for you. That you are here doesn't mean you don't have important things to do is that you take this one, God's assignment, as the ultimate. And when you put God first, you will always remain on top. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Daniel, even when the decree had been signed, he went back to his house, opened his windows, and prayed. That's why the lions could not eat him. So, as we do that, God will glorify his name. I believe that God has raised, I don't know if there are other expressions like this in this city or in the northeast. If there is none, talk. God is depending on us. That's why we must gather every third Saturday of the month and trust God to pray, draw strength, be revived, and then implement the purposes of God in our various spheres. Your life will never be the same. In the name of Jesus, I declare that it's a new day for you. Doors are opening for you this season. God is putting men in strategic positions for your rising.
Whether you know it or not, God is strategizing men and systems for your rising. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I declare by the favor of God that as you walk out of this place, you are walking into a season of divine testimonies. I always say that the day God will change your life will look like every other day. You will not know. Before the end of today, before the end of tomorrow, before Monday, may God give you a desired good news. In the name of Jesus Christ, every resistance that has stood before you it becomes flat like a plain road. In the name of Jesus Christ, God will contend with those that contend with you. God will attack your attackers, pursue your pursuers, vindicate you on every side. In the name of Jesus, everything that has been tied in your life is loose today. In the name of Jesus Christ. As we approach the end of the year, your resources will become limitless. An abundant flow. I said an abundant flow of resources. Your hands will not be tied at the end of the year. There are about two people here. God is showing me there is a pattern around your life. When you get to the end of the year, that's when resources become scanty. Your hand becomes dry. That pattern is broken and arrested. In the name of Jesus Christ. I said that pattern is broken and arrested. That spirit that has been sent to supervise that pattern. I cast that spirit from your life. Help that lady. I cast that spirit from your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every devil from hell supervising satanic entrenchments around your life. This is the benediction. I stand by the authority that is in the name of Jesus. Let those devils be arrested by fire. Be arrested by fire. Every coven of witchcraft sitting on your case, they are scattered. They are scattered. They are scattered. In the name of Jesus Christ. I declare for as long as light prevails over darkness, you will prevail. Let me say it again. For as long as light prevails over darkness, you will prevail. You must prevail. You must prevail. In the name of Jesus Christ. You know, that thing I said, I was serious. Oh, except that man comes to beg me, he will leave this town in shame. Uh, you say you will not promote a child of God. You, you can say, say whatever you want. It's called power. Uh, you can have the criticism which of me. I have the power. I have the authority. When Elijah called down fire on people, nobody spoke against him. Are you hearing what I'm saying? As far as I'm concerned, the enemy of God is my enemy. And the enemy of God is anyone standing to obstruct the purposes of God. A daughter, a son of Zion, you say you will not promote them when they are hardworking. You have signed your lifetime stagnation. And let me say it again in the name of Jesus. Any human being that feels they are God, any Nebuchadnezzar, any herald that has risen anywhere on your matter, whether you are aware of it or not, whether it has to do with your finance, your career, your family, your business, I declare may the hand of God humble them for your sake. May the hand of God humble them for your sake. In the name of Jesus Christ. It is well with you. A new chapter of your life has opened up. Go in this your might. Do exploits for the kingdom. Be an ambassador of the kingdom. Represent the purposes of God. Stand for righteousness and truth. Become the agent of transformation that God is looking for. Those of you that are in business and your business is stuck at one point. I declare by the spirit of revelation, fresh ideas. Fresh ideas to break stagnation. If one door has closed, God opens another door for you. God opens another channel for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. It is well with your family. It is well with your health. I speak healing to your bodies. There are two, two people I'm seeing, two ladies. God is healing your body. In fact, one of you I'm seeing around your chest. I speak healing to your body right now. That headache, 
by the side of your head it comes to an end now God prosper you on every side I pray that your head will be anointed with oil could you put your right hand on your head I declare from today fresh oil comes on your head the oil that preserves you from evil the oil that causes you to do exploits receive it in the name of Jesus fresh oil from above rest upon you in Jesus mighty name we pray hallelujah hallelujah are you blessed so this is what you do before we share the grace and then you sit down to have your breakfast next month's BPI is the last for the year all right or do you want us to have in December? You go call. They go village. All right. Those village powers that is always calling you every end of your village. Now, it's going to be a thanksgiving and prophetic service. Yes. Whatever Adam called the names of the animal, the names they wear. If we call it a prophetic service, guess what it is? A prophetic service. This one was a prophetic service, uh, but the thing broke out. Uh, to think of that one. Amen. The reason for that is so that some of you can be catapulted into next year while in this year. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You must not wait for the year to start before you start harvesting from it. Read Amos chapter 9 verse 13. It speaks about a collapse of seasons. All right? So that will usher us into the end of the year and we trust God for great things. Listen. When you are coming next month, please come with somebody. By all means, force them to come. That your boss, hold them and say, Sir, you must, if you respect and honor me, you must come. Some of you have credible relationships you have kept. Tell them they will come. They may not like me, but because of your good work, because of your faithfulness, they will come. Bring your friends. In fact, bring Muslims. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Uh -huh. Because many Muslims, they go to consult, some of your friends who are Muslim, they consult malams. And those malams hear demons. And the demons now are after you. So they will do charm for them that will affect you and favor them. So if you bring all of them here and they start consulting God here, nobody will go to malam on your case. Do you understand how it is? Because the devil never gives. He, he, as he's giving like this, he's collecting like this. Say that your friend, that your friend, she has great star. What I can do is I can switch your star. Anybody that tries it, ponder from the throne room will rest on their head. Just for attempting to try to change your star. Ponder from the throne room on the person that consulted and the consulter. Eh? The consultee and the consultant. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That's, that's ring back tune. You know when you call somebody, they give you ring back tune. Any devil call a herbalist that is on my matter. They will hear from me. Are you hearing me? Somebody say, please wait while your thunder is processing. You hearing what I'm saying? So come with them. Next month is going to be great. And then from next year, our meetings are going to be more strategic. All right? We are going to spend more time next year praying for government praying for organizations, praying for offices. I feel and I sense God is increasing our authority to the point where we need to start changing certain things, changing policies. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And then there are other things we'll do. Next year is going to be a wonderful time. But God bless you. And favor you in Jesus' name. Surely his goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell presence of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Please, I want you to help me honor my friend Pastor Musa Bello. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Amen. Just came into town. I think this month or last month? Last month. Okay. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, maybe next month we'll, we'll find a way of arresting or kidnapping you. <laughs> Amen. God bless you. Please take your refreshments. I may not have too much time to see people because I have other engagements. I have preaching engagements later. All right? 
So I just have 20 minutes to see everybody that needs to see me. All right? Allow them to just fix you where you can so you can see me. Make sure you greet somebody before you go. God bless you. Sit down. Have your refreshment.